Hey everyone, this is Dr. Josh Phillips, uh, and I'm coming at you today with something a little bit different than a uh, regular lecture. Um, what we have in front of us is in 2019 and 2020 academic school year, I was uh, fortunate enough to co-win the Excellent in Teaching Award at my university. Um, with this comes the honor of being able to give the uh, one of the convocation speeches uh, during the fall for the incoming freshman class. Unfortunately, with the COVID situation, our convocation this year was remote. So uh, I believe we have about 400 incoming freshmen. Uh, they had to watch about half a dozen of us, uh, faculty and staff, give speeches uh, via a glorified Zoom session. So I had to give this speech in a room with about, uh, a there was about a dozen or so um, other staff and faculty members there. We had to wear masks, it was on Zoom. Uh, it definitely was not the atmosphere that I personally enjoy at the start of a university um, every fall. Um, and so I had to give this speech. It was supposed to be recorded and then posted up on, uh, on, on YouTube through the university channel. Unfortunately, the recording uh, did not happen uh, for some technical reasons. And so what I decided to do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and give the speech and post it on my YouTube channel. Uh, I hope that you all get something out of it. The speech is about seven or eight minutes long total. And the foundational question that I ask myself while going into writing this speech was, what is it that incoming freshmen should know about what they need to do for the next four years? All right, so what should a university experience look like? And this uh, seven to eight minute speech here is my answer for them. So, I hope you enjoy. I went ahead and put the text up here for you in case you want to take some notes, maybe write down some of the uh, authors and pieces of uh, art that I mentioned. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you at the end of it. All right. So here we go. The university. University is an institution set up for both the deep acquisition of knowledge as well as a place to pass on highly elite cultural traditions, which create the foundation of our current world. I teach in the College of Liberal Arts, but in my first year courses, I ask students to participate in a short math exercise. The exercise unfolds like this. If you were to live to 100 years old, how many days would you have on this earth? The answer is a brief 36,525. Once you begin to contemplate the brevity of life, you begin to act with a sense of urgency, not in haste, but instead with purpose. The Latin phrase for this concept is memento mori. Remember that you will die. Remember that your time is finite and that you ought not go about wasting it. To those of you entering university this fall, you have approximately 1,400 days until graduation. When you realize that this includes weekends, holidays, and summer vacations, you soon realize that this is not very much time. So I implore you to act with urgency and take advantage of the extremely rare and fortunate situation you find yourself in. Make no mistake, you are among the most privileged people ever to have walked this earth. A young adult in the prime of your life with access to more knowledge and information than you could comb through in a lifetime. Knowledge and information our ancestors would envy. Can you imagine the compounded power of Einstein with an iPhone, Galileo with a laptop, or Socrates with just a simple library card? The freedom, resources, and leisure time you have access to is unmatched in human history. Don't make excuses. And the freedom, resources, and leisure time you have access to in the next four years will be unmatched for the rest of your life. Don't waste it. So the question becomes, what shall you do for the next 1,400 days? Answer, read great books, study great art, and listen to great music. These three areas are the foundation for a rich and fulfilling liberal arts education. The culmination of world history is your inheritance. I cannot stress this enough. The culmination of world history is your inheritance. The literature of Fyodor Dostoevsky, the poems of Emily Dickinson, the art of Leonardo da Vinci, the music of Beethoven, the speeches of Martin Luther King Jr. 
These are yours. Mozart's operas, Brunelleschi's architecture, Stravinsky's ballets, Frida Kahlo's self-portraits. The books, the art, the music. This has all been created and passed down generations, and now it is here within the greatest institution of higher learning ever devised, the university. The university is what preserves our culture and keeps it alive for posterity. Having the opportunity for a university education is a privilege. And while you are here, your duty is to soak up as much of the academic canon as possible in order to keep it alive, preserve it, and one day pass it on to the next generation. Because if we don't, then these great works vanish. On a more personal level, great art and literature helps you to make sense of the world and your place in it. The writer James Baldwin once remarked that, quote, you think your pain and your heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. It was books that taught me that the things that tormented me the most were the very things that connected me with all the people who were alive, who had ever been alive, end quote. You cannot understand the world, let alone yourself, if you act as if the world began on the day you were born. For hundreds, if not thousands of years, very intelligent and articulate people have done the work for you, and we are so blessed that many of them wrote it down. All you have to do is read the books. Start with the Greeks and Romans, Homer, Plato, Aristotle, the meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Commit to learning about the great religions and understand how much influence they've had in shaping the world. Read the Bible, Quran, the Gita, the Upanishads. Maybe you're more interested in biology. Fine, read Darwin. Math and physics, the writings of Isaac Newton and Max Planck. Economics, that's cool too. I suggest Karl Marx, Adam Smith, and Friedrich Hayek. Do you have an opinion about American politics? Of course you do. But have you read the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, or the Federalist Papers? Want to better understand today's fake news and big tech data collection? Read George Orwell's 1984, which was written in 1948. What about social media trolls and cancel culture? Pick up a copy of Franz Kafka's The Trial, written in 1915. Did you enjoy Black Panther? Did you consider it a culture-changing movie? Well, you'll appreciate it more if you read the original screenplay, which was released 400 years ago under the title of Hamlet, written by a guy named William Shakespeare. Interested in the BLM protest? Don't pick up the editorial pages of the New York Times. Read Richard Wright's Native Son, or Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man, or the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, or Sojourner Truth's Ain't I a Woman. And finally, if you're frustrated, with all the social distancing and COVID policies, curl up with Giovanni Boccaccio's The Decameron, a 14th century comedy about 10 friends living in a cabin during the Black Plague. I could go on, but you get the point. These books are considered foundational for a reason. And the reason is this, they have stood up to the test of time. Pop culture is fun, but it is also ephemeral. It will be gone tomorrow. It will not last. Great art and literature articulate aspects of the human condition that are eternal. And this is why we continue studying them and why they continue to emotionally move us centuries later. And you only have a very short 1,400 days to consume as much of this wisdom as you can before other priorities take center stage in your life. You only have a short 1,400 days to consume as much of this art and literature and conversation with professors and classmates. This type of learning environment will never happen again in your lifetime, so don't waste it. If it was up to me, I would issue a mandate that all college students read 200 books from the academic canon prior to graduation, about one book, uh, about one book a week. But I've been told that's a bit optimistic. So here's my challenge to you. Can you make three lists of 50? 50 great books, 50 classic works of art, and 50 timeless pieces of music that you can engage with and learn about in the next 1,400 days. Tailor these lists to your interest. 
connect them to your major, make them meaningful to you. Some of my personal recommendations would start with the literature of Tolstoy, Steinbeck, Hemingway, Fitzgerald, and Kerouac. Just enough romance, adventure, profanity, and illicit behavior to keep it interesting for you young folks. Then move on to the paintings of Francisco Goya and Rembrandt, the sculptures of Michelangelo and Rodin, the architecture of St. Petersburg, Russia, and Venice, Italy. Finally, I enjoy the ballet. So I'm partial to Tchaikovsky's compositions for Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, and The Nutcracker. If you can accomplish this, if you can commit to reading great books and studying great art, I guarantee that in four years you will walk across that stage with a deeper understanding of this world, its history, and its culture. And you will soon discover where you fit in to this beautiful tapestry of the human experience. Thanks a lot, everyone. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.